Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. It is Saturday. I hope you are all well and you've got good, exciting plans for the weekend, wherever you're watching this around the world. It is FA Cup final day, of course, here in the UK. No Arsenal involved because they were rubbish in the FA Cup this year. Well, that's a bit unfair, probably. They did lose to Manchester City away from home, so... Uh, rubbish is probably too strong a word. Man City, of course, are in the final against Manchester United. I'll have a little bit of a chat about that game a bit, a little bit later on in this video because there is some sort of Arsenal connection to it, which we'll discuss. Um, uh, we'll look at Reese Nelson, Ilke Gundogan, um, Javi Simons or Javi Simons. I don't even know how you pronounce that right. I probably got it wrong. I'm sure you'll all tell me if it's Simons, Simons. How do you say it um, at PSV? Um, but I wanted to start about Kieran Tierney today, a player we have discussed in previous videos. And um, I just think it's really interesting what, what you do with Kieran Tierney. Well, not what you do, because I think we all know what you do. Ideally, you would keep him because he's a very good player and you want to keep your, your squad strong ahead of a season when you're going to be trying to compete again for the Premier League and also competing for the Champions League. But on occasions, you have to take the player into account. And look, Kieran Tierney is a very, very good player, really key was a really key Arsenal player. He suddenly finds himself out of the team, not getting any opportunities or very rarely getting opportunities. And when he does get an opportunity, he's almost asked to play in a position or play the position in a way he's not really accustomed to and used to. And it just doesn't really work. So I think you have to take that into account, who he is, the respect he's got and think, OK, it's time that you've got to let him go. He wants, he'll want to move on. He'll want to get play regularly. And he just probably deserves to as well. He's, he's better than just sitting on the bench because he goes to most most teams in the Premier League and he improves them at left back. It just doesn't quite work at Arsenal because of the system they play and everything. So ideally, like I said, you keep him, but it's just not going to happen. I think he's going to go. I think we all accept he's probably going to go. And it's a case of how much do you get for Kieran Tierney? Now, this is a really interesting one that I've been debating. I was talking to my mate about it the other day about how much you can expect for Kieran Tierney. And he was saying 50 million. And I was thinking, is that? Is that too much? Does that sound too much? Um, and in a way, you kind of look at it and think, well, it probably doesn't sound too much, actually. He's got three years left on his contract. He's only in his mid-20s. He's a very, very good player. And he goes into pretty much any Premier League team and improves them. So uh, is that is 50 million too much? I just don't know what sort of price you're looking for for Tierney. Does his situation take be, being taken into account? The fact he's not a regular first-team player now, does that lessen his value a little bit do you look at maybe sort of more 35 to 40 million for Kieran Tierney you know what price do you think is a good price for Kieran Tierney I think it's a really interesting debate you know what would you be disappointed with I'd certainly be disappointed if Arsenal didn't get a money back on Kieran Tierney put it that way I think they paid about 25 million they need to get more than that and this is going to be another sort of um, benchmark really for the summer and how Edu, Edu is going to be judged in terms of selling players because I think you know, he's done very, very well in bringing players in. Him and Mikel have built a squad really, really well. But when it comes to selling players, Arsenal have been, well, awful. <laughs> There's not really many other words to say it. Um, but they haven't had the easy situation. They've had ageing players, players on big money, on big contracts, who they haven't been able to get out. So basically they've had to just bite the bullet, pay some of them to get off and just get out so they can do get this rebuild. But they're in a position now where it's very, very different. This summer has to be different. They're in a strong position. They're seen as a very good team now with very good players. If you're going to sell players, you've got to take advantage of that. Be strong in the market and sell and sell very well because then that money can be reinvested. And Arsenal have got some very sellable players. Tierney right at the very top of that alongside Fuller and Balogun, you would say, this summer. And so it's going to be really key for Edu in terms of how he's viewed by the fan base probably how he's viewed by the owners as well because the owners will be watching on you know they've had to pay loads of players to leave recently they want to start seeing decent transfer fee come in for their good players and in Tierney that is very much a play you've got Newcastle interested Aston Villa reports are saying they are very very interested now Unai Emery of course was the man who brought Kieran Tierney to Arsenal um, and so you've got two very rich clubs basically there Newcastle we know all about their wealth but Aston Villa are very rich as well they've got very very rich owners they're back in Europe this season so they can have a bit of extra money to play with and you know can you use that to your advantage if you're Arsenal you would hope so you know create a little bit of a bidding war here for a very in-demand player who like I said has got a very long-term contract still is only in his mid-20s an international player um you know, captain material almost. You've got to get good money for Kieran Tierney this summer. Absolutely essential, whether it be to Newcastle or Aston Villa. So I was thinking more and more about it. And when I was having that discussion with my mate, I was saying about 35 million for Kieran Tierney. But the more he was saying 50 million and being very, very adamant about it, 
the more I began to think, you know what, he's probably <laughs> he's probably right there. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm intrigued to see what Arsenal do and um, how much they get for him because I do think they're in a position where they can they can be you know they can bargain very very strongly or, or negotiate sorry very very strongly with the potential buying clubs but let me know how much money should Arsenal sell Kieran Tierney for this summer if they do sell him uh, which of course although we think it's probably going to happen it's not a foregone conclusion yet but if they do let me know what would you be disappointed with and what should Arsenal be looking for for Kieran Tierney let me know in the comments below um, okay, Reese Nelson, we're still waiting for this contract to be signed, as I've reported recently in the last few couple of weeks. You know, all signs are that this is going to be a done deal with Reese Nelson and his contract after rejecting a few previous offers. Big breakthrough in talks has happened, and it's, you know, people that I'm speaking to at Arsenal are very now, you know, they think this is going to happen. Um, and, you know, until it's signed, until it's done, you never know, something can, something can change. Another club can come in and wave a big contract offer under his nose and he could decide to go elsewhere. But... At the moment, there is a lot of positivity that Reese Nelson will sign his new contract. We're just waiting for it to be done and announced. Um, and I've said before, I think it's a good deal for Arsenal. I think it would have been a real shame to lose Reese on a free transfer. I think he's played very well this season. Whenever he's come on, he probably should have had more opportunities to impress, actually, given the way he was playing and the impact he was making when he was coming off the bench. Um, so I think he deserves a new contract. And I think for Arsenal, as long as it's not a silly contract, which I'm absolutely sure it won't be in terms of how much he's going to be being paid, it will obviously be on a pay rise from what he's getting at the moment. But as long as it's something that's just, you know, going to make it impossible for him to get off the off the wage bill in a year or two years if Arsenal decide to sell, then I don't see any issue with this deal because uh, I think he'll play next season. I think he'll get minutes, and and then you know if you if you decide to move on and look elsewhere, then you've got a player that you can sell, and uh, I'm sure there'll be lots and lots of interest in him. And it would I just feel like it would have been a shame to lose Reese on a free transfer given all the investment the club have put into him coming through from Hale N to now to lose him on a free. I think it would have been a bit of a blow. So, you know, I'm all for this contract. I think he deserves it. I think his performance has been very good. And I think it leaves Arsenal in a good position because, if you know, if they decide to sell down the line in one year or two years, then hopefully they're going to get a decent transfer fee for a very talented young English player. Um, FA Cup final today, like I said, there is a little bit of an Arsenal connection. Obviously, it's all Manchester final, United versus City. City going for the treble. United trying to stop Manchester City. Um, basically, you know, equal in the record they set back in 1999, which is still painful to even talk about. I hate that year, 1999. One of the worst years to be an Arsenal fan. We were so good that season. Should have won the league. We were better than them. Threw it away right at the end. We should have won the FA Cup semi-final. Burkamp missed a penalty. One of the most heartbreaking moments of my football in life. I was at Villa Park at the other end, at the whole end, top tier, watching that. And oh, it was so bad. And then Gig scoring the goal. The United fans below us in the bone tier celebrating having to go back late at night down the M40 with all the Man United fans going back to uh, back to London in a traffic jam, honking their horns. Oh, God. Anyway, I don't know how I've just suddenly got onto my bad memories of 1999. And they ended up winning the treble. They won it all. And they shouldn't have won anything. They certainly shouldn't have won the two English trophies. They shouldn't have won the European Cup either. They lucked that in two goals in injury time. But anyway, sorry, I digress. I go into a bit of a Man United rant. Sorry, you just mentioned Man... If just 1999 gets mentioned and I just go off on one. Such a painful year. But anyway, it's the FA Cup final. And uh, Manchester City are going for the treble. If they win today, then that means that Arsenal will be in the Community Shield against Manchester City at the start of the season. So they're going to go to Germany, I believe, for another game against Nuremberg at the very start of the... Um, uh, sort of pre-season campaign like they did last year. If you remember, Gabriel Jesus making his debut in that game. I think they won 5-2 or 5-3. It was a bit of a crazy game. Jesus came off the bench and scored a couple of goals. So they're going to do that again this year, sort of base themselves at the Adidas HQ like they did last year. Then they're going to fly out to the States where they've got their three matches against the All-Stars. Oh, I've forgotten the second one they're playing. Oh, they're playing Man United, aren't they? So All-Stars, Man United and Barcelona. Then they're going to come back. They will have the Community Shield if... Manchester City win the FA Cup today and I believe there is talk that the Emirates Cup is going to be on but I'm not sure that it's not confirmed yet so you can't take that for granted but I've heard someone was telling me the other day when I was up at Arsenal that it was if the Community Shield is on then the, F, the uh, Emirates Cup might be played in a midweek which surprised me and I don't know 100% sure for 100% uh, if that's definite so don't like I said don't take me as gospel on that one but I think it is so that's how the pre-season is beginning to shape up for Arsenal so it'll be interesting to see what Manchester City 
do today. Will they beat Manchester United? I think they probably will, just because of the quality on show. But you never know. Manchester Derby, anything can happen. United are going to have that extra motivation of trying to stop City, you know, uh, winning the treble. And, of course, the motivation of winning the FA Cup as well. Should be a decent game at Wembley. So keep your eyes out on that one. One of the players could well be his final game for Manchester City is Ilkay Gundogan. Um, out of contract in the summer. We know uh, had a brilliant season, brilliant end to the season. Has come up clutch for Manchester City in so many big games. You think back to Goodison Park, um, plenty of them. Such a quality player. Out of contract, lots of clubs after him. Arsenal, one of them, very much you know looking to try and convince Gundogan to come down to London on a free transfer. Doesn't. I've, it, I think it'd be a great signing if they could get him. It's always felt like it's going to be difficult. If you if you leave in Manchester City after seven years to try something new, I just think, do you really just want to come to London, stay in the Premier League, go to a rival, you know, a club, a team that's not as good as Manchester City, although they're on the up? Um, do you really want to do that? Is that something new? I don't. I don't really feel like it is. And you know, Barcelona's always felt like the one that he's going to go to. It's the one he really wants. That is something new. It's something fresh. It's a different league. It's a different country. Beautiful country, beautiful city, um, and that always feels like the one that you would expect he could go to if Barca can find the money and free up the wages. And we all know the financial issues that Barca are struggling with. But there are reports in Spain today and overnight that um, that looks likely now, and that Barca have decided instead of just get, offering him a two-year contract, which he wasn't sure about, they have now decided to up that to a three-year contract, which is what Gundogan was wanting. And uh, it looks like he might well be heading there. I'm sure we'll find out very, very quickly after the FA Cup what's going on with him. I can't imagine that's once one that is going to go uh, drag on unless there is issues with Barca and their financial problems in terms of getting a contract done and getting him registered, which always seems to be the case with Barcelona at the moment when they do sign a player. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. But, you know, Arsenal have definitely been in for Gundogan. They definitely want to sign him, definitely been trying to sign him. But if reports in Spain are to be, leave, be believed, then it looks like he might be heading over to Barca after all. Uh, Xavi Simons is being linked heavily at the moment. Lots of talk about him. I keep seeing his name pop up. I keep seeing people sending messages to me saying what's happening with Xavi Simons. Unfortunately, I can't say for sure because I don't know. I haven't heard anything myself on him. Um, very talented player. I was really impressed when Arsenal played against him for PSV this season in Europa League group stages. Caused Arsenal plenty of problems in the second leg, especially. Uh, it's not second leg, sorry, in the away game, especially. Um, I think he's got he's got 20 goals this season. Actually, I did write it down. Yeah, 22 goals and 12 assists in all comps for PSV this season, which is really impressive. Um, kind of very versatile player, which you look at and think Arteta likes. Plays more on the left, I believe. Again, I'm not an absolute expert on him by any means or the Eredivisie. Haven't seen too much of him. Um, but I think he, can, he plays more on the left than he does on the right. But he can play on the right. You think Arsenal are pretty well stocked on the left with Martinelli and Trossard. Um, if they need someone this summer in terms of another wide player, it's someone who predominantly plays more on the right who can cover for Saka. Maybe Arteta believes he can do that. He can also play in central areas. So he does have that versatility which Arteta likes. And which seems to be so important if you're going to make it in this Arsenal team. We've seen that with Trossard coming in. Um, and he's very, very young. I think, you know, he wouldn't be cheap. And there's the issue that PSG, I believe, do have a buyback option on him, which is not that much. I think it's only about 10 million or something. Um, and that sort of cloud, clouds over things as well. Because if I think, you know, clubs can still bid for him, but they can go in and bid sort of 30, 40 million, agree a fee. And then PSG can just come in and say, no, hold on, we're, we're triggering that buyback clause. We're going to sign him for 10 million. Um, which they could well do. And you'd think for them, it'd probably be wise to do because even if they don't want him, they can just buy him back for 10 million and then the same summer sell him to the other club who are after him for 40 million and make a tidy little profit. So there is that thing that clouds it. Um, so we'll have to wait and see if there is anything in it. Like I said, it's not something I can confirm at this stage because it's not what I've heard. It's just something that's been talked about. And um, yeah, we shall wait and see if it happens. All right, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said, enjoy the start of your weekend. Enjoy your Saturday. If you're going to watch the FA Cup final, enjoy it today. And uh, yeah, I'll be back to speak to you very, very soon. See you later.